Hey guys, my name's Mel, and uh, the month of May is Ayla Stanlos Awareness Month. So, I have decided to participate in the EDS challenge. I originally saw this on uh, Mickey's channel, Life with Stripes, and how it works is there's a list of questions. I didn't make them. I'm not going to answer all of them today because that would be a really long video, but I'll put all of them below and then I'll tag someone to, um, I'll tag some people to do the EDS challenge and the more people, the more awareness, which is great. I have my notebook here with the questions I'm going to answer, but otherwise I'm just going off my head. So I'm sorry if it's a little bit jumbled, but here we go. So uh, when people think of EDS, they often just think of flexibility like oh you just fit flexible but it's actually so much more than that so really quickly EDS is basically it's a genetic mutation where there's an issue with the collagen um, or similar proteins where the collagen is just very very stretchy it's not very weak and it doesn't function healthily and this can cause hypermobility um, this can cause a lot of musculoskeletal pain, it can cause the joints to um, extend further than the normal range of motion, like backwards, um, and it can cause a lot of internal symptoms as well, um, with the hypermobility in the stomach and the heart, and basically just whichever organ um, that it decides it wants to wreak havoc with. It can um, um, impact the blood and circulation and the bladder and the brain and cognitive function in the eyes and it it can really affect the whole body so because the collagen and the connective tissue it's a connective tissue disorder so the connective tissues in the whole body it can really impact the entire body so um, thank you for being here today and here are the questions I'm going to answer And I have the hypermobile type. I was actually only diagnosed about a month ago and it took me 11 years to get a diagnosis. So these are conditions that come from Ehlers Danlos. So Ehlers Danlos is my root cause and on top of that I then have POTS, MCAS, POTS is postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome and it affects the heart and the blood pressure. I'm basically really short when I stand up or sit up or in, in, in a postural position, all the blood pools in my under my ribs or drops to my feet and my heart rate goes through the roof. Um, and this can cause a lot of dizziness. Basically, I can't stand up for more than a minute um, and I have a reclining wheelchair so I'm not sitting flat upright so that I'm always uh, tilted a little bit and this just really impacts my quality of life so in a research article my doctor gave me um, it said that p patients with severe or extreme POTS which is which I'm diagnosed with um, is akin to someone with the liver or heart failure in quality of life and feeling of illness. So that really greatly impacts my quality of life and I do actually spend most of my time in bed. It can also cause extreme exhaustion and fatigue. Mobility aids. I use a walking stick, a walker and a wheelchair depending on what I need it for where I'm going, how long I have to walk, and what sort of support I need. I really cannot walk for more than a minute, so anything more than that, I usually need my wheelchair. I use my walking stick um, around the house, or if I just have to go shortly, maybe from the front door to the car, um, and then I use my walker um, for where I might not be able to take my wheelchair. 
or for if it's a short enough walk that we don't need the wheelchair but long enough that I need to take breaks and sit down on my walker. Um, a normal day for me is that the food I eat is formula, I'm completely reliant on formula and that's what I eat in a day and I spend most of my time in bed, I'm always in a lot of pain, pain with musculoskeletal in my whole body, through a range of different joints and in my stomach as well. I usually feel very sick and nauseous, very worn out and tired. I often feel like I have a flu just all the time. Um, and my husband and I don't really have any dates or go out anywhere. It's very normal for me to go very long periods of time without seeing family or friends. Six months, a year, two years. Um, basically, our time we spend together, my husband and I, is when we're eating food. Um, so at meal times and that's really about it. I spend most of my time resting um, and absolutely anything I do causes a lot of pain. Doing this causes a lot of pain. Looking at a phone and a screen sitting up at all causes a lot of pain um, and I'm just I'm in a lot of pain all the time. Pain is my biggest thing. So um, I also just spend most of my time at home in bed and I have I have a great family and a great support network, but my life is very small. I go a long period of time without even talking to my friends or family, so yeah. Yes, I need a lot of help to survive. Um, I am reliant on a wheelchair. In the past, I have had to have help bathing, brushing and washing my hair. All my food, when I could eat food, had to be made for me, and I brought it to. It got brought to me in bed. I couldn't hold myself up in bed, so I'd have to lay on my side and shovel the food into my mouth. I would often. I couldn't get to my bed from my bed to the toilet. Um, even though it was only a few steps away, my when I lived with my family before I was married, we had moved, they had moved their bed right next to the door, so it was only a few steps to the toilet, but I often couldn't make it that few steps and would end up wetting myself on the floor of the toilet, the off, off the floor of the bathroom. I'd stand up and completely black out and have to crawl to the bathroom and then I didn't have the strength to get onto the toilet um, and I, I can't drive, I can't do a lot of things for myself so I pretty much always have someone here looking after me if my husband's not here I'll have someone come and look after me so yes I consider myself quite disabled um, I can't think of just one. <laughs> I was very athletic before I got sick as a young teenager. I was very extroverted and social and now it's very difficult for me to see people and it has been for the last six years. Um, and also I've always just loved being around children and I was always a Sunday school leader at my church and I really miss being able to look after young children around me whether it's at my church or my school or um, yeah. I would say a different point of view um, and I think that's a really good thing. So I have always thought that this time that I've spent in bed is not really the lost time because as a Christian, I believe that God is using this time and he's using it to shape me and grow me and teach me and I'm becoming a better person for it and I'm becoming more compassionate and more patient and more resilient and self-controlled and disciplined and um, diligence and I, there's this whole world of people 
that I now know about that I would have never known about and I would never have that compassion and one day when I get but I want to help so many more people that I just would never have had the awareness about before and I've just been able to learn so much about God and get to know him better and experience him in ways that I never would have been able to if I wasn't sick and I'm really grateful for that and I'm really grateful that my perspective has changed my perspective is so different from people my age and it's not necessarily that they have a bad perspective it's just that Things that used to matter to me and things that I used to stress over and things that I used to try and micromanage or control or be a perfectionist just aren't that big a deal to me now and I feel like I have more of a sense of what's important to me in life and what my purpose will be and having living a life that is meaningful to me and that I can be proud of when... I gain enough quality of life to live um, and I'm just really grateful for that perspective and I feel like I'm on a different path than I would have been otherwise and I'm grateful for that path so I wish that everyone would understand that you can't see my illness or my pain <coughs> I've been talking for a while and it's really hurting um, <clears throat> that just because I look happy and I look healthy doesn't mean that I'm not in a lot of pain and doesn't mean that I'm not suffering a lot and it doesn't mean that I'm experiencing a lot of pain in my whole body and I'm feeling really sick and that I'm really struggling um, and that yeah, just because I look good doesn't mean that I feel good. If I could rid myself of one EDS symptom, what would it be? Pain in my neck and jaw and shoulders. So my neck, and jaw and shoulder, structural issues that are caused by EDS, that's what I'd rid myself because that's always been the most debilitating and the most painful and it's only been since I've been getting treatment for that that I could even think about doing these um, vlogs. Um, I've been doing neuromuscular dentistry, which I will um, make videos about, um, and that's the only reason why I can sit here and do this, so I'm very grateful for that. But I'm still in a lot of pain. What is the scariest part of my future with EDS? I think at the moment, <clears throat> because COVID is around, that, that is a big thing because I'm immunocompromised. And so that's a concern, but I'm concerned about not being able to tolerate food. I'm on formula at the moment and it is scary um, just not being able to tolerate that and just starting to not be able to tolerate my formula because I really don't want, that. in itself that's scary, but I really don't want to have to go to hospital because the COVID is out. So I'm just really trying to live in the moment and not worry about the future and just do the best I can right now with what I have um, to avoid that situation. And the other scariest thing is actually in terms of children, I've always wanted children and always dreamed about it since I was little and always prepared for it. Always kept my favourite toys, my favourite clothes um, and dreamed about one day being a mum and that is a scary thing for me, not knowing really whether I'll be able to have children or not and whether my husband and I will be able to you know, raise a family together and then if we can, the actual going through that with this, with EDS, that's quite scary, so. Yes, no I haven't, and I haven't even actually ever connected with someone online with EDS either. So I've never actually spoken to someone with EDS before. And um, in the last few months I've been able to do YouTube because of the, the work I've been doing, getting done on my jaw. and. That has been really good for me because I've been able to listen to videos about people who are suffering the same thing as me and that's why I have been inspired to do my own videos because I want to help other people. Yes, expensive. Yes. Yes, it is. 
I have a great support system of Simeon's family and my family and a few close friends and I'm really grateful for it. Awareness means creating awareness to improve the quality of life of people with EDS. So many people with EDS go through so much more suffering than they need to and they go years and years without getting the help that they need because there's not a lot of awareness. Doctors don't generally know about EDS and you need to be diagnosed by a really trained professional, either a geneticist or a specially trained rheumatologist. And it's hard to be, um, to be referred to them because doctors often won't put together all your isolated symptoms and complaints um, to suspecting EDS. And so awareness to me is not just creating awareness for doctors, but creating awareness for other people who are struggling with all these symptoms and, are, and they're unaccounted for and they're doing their own research to know how to ask their doctors for help and to try and pursue the health professionals that they need to get the diagnosis and the help that they need, but also raising awareness for the people around them, their family, their friends, their co-workers, their anybody else in contact with them. There are so many misconceptions about um, chronic illness and invisible illness and a lot of people suffer so much because the people around them do not understand and they have so many misconceptions and people will say things like if you just get up and walk around you'll get better. If you just cut out gluten, if you just have a healthier diet, if you just think positively you'll get better. Things like that and um, it can be very difficult and there can be a lot of suffering for people when the people on, around them not just don't understand but don't believe them. Like medical professionals will tell these people for years and years and years that it's all in their head and the people around them will tell them it's all in their head and it's not. So that's what raising awareness means to me. And the last one, what are my health goals? Well, six years ago when I was given a permanent diagnosis of POTS and I was bed bound and very, very disabled and I was pretty much a vegetable. Um, I was just completely bed bound all the time and I was told I'd spend my whole life in pain and my whole life in bed. At that point, I didn't believe that and I wanted to do everything that I could um, to get better and to heal my body and the, the medical profession told me there's nothing else they could do for me and that's, that's it and I decided that it wouldn't be and um, I, I went, I pursued more alternative therapies and um, one of the most helpful things I've had in my whole journey is a natural health clinic and um, my naturopath who is functional medicine as well and she also has experience in um, nursing and herbal medicine and health science and all those sorts of things has been really really great and so over the last six years I have been doing everything that I can to heal in a natural way and I wanted to try everything that I could naturally first to heal and I've come a really long way and I'm really glad that I had done it but I've gotten to this point where there's certain aspects of my health that are really really degenerating like my stomach and my ability to eat food and my pain is just not improving and well actually it has improved with the the dentistry um, correction I've been doing but I'm still just in so much pain and I still really really limits what I can do and um, so at the moment my goal is to just stabilize um, stabilize my health and stop it from going from certain aspects of my health to just stabilize my health and stop it from going 
like this and just to stop the degeneration as much as I can of certain parts of my health and to uh, gain quality of life and not just for me, for my husband as well so that I can live my life, so I can live a life that I feel proud of and I feel has purpose and I can help people and grow in relationships with my family and be there for others and um, so that's my health goals. But I also would still like to try and be on the natural side as much as possible and the reality is I do need medication and I will need medication but I'm trying to avoid really invasive um, procedures as much as possible for as long as possible um, and to decrease my, to, to avoid high risk procedures as well. I hope you learnt a little bit about EDS and found this video helpful or um, something you might not have known before and I just want to thank you for uh, watching and just for supporting me in this and being open to watching this video and I hope you have a great day. Bye!